Rob, no charges will be filed in connection to the death of Trayford Pellerin, the 31 year old shot and killed by Lafayette police in August of 2020. We have team coverage tonight. Our Amon Boyd spoke with Trayford's mother and Katie Easter has reaction from the family attorney and community activists. Well, we start our coverage with the district attorney's review of the grand jury's findings in this case. D.A. Don Landry says his office did its own investigation after state com state police completed theirs. Landry showed video from inside a store Pellerin visited not long before he went to the store where he was shot. In that store, Pellerin is initially standing and walks back and forth around the store. The clerk even asking him if he was OK. After leaving the store, the DA says Pellerin returns with a knife in his hand and we heard 911 calls from a clerk saying customers inside were terrified. Multiple police body camera videos were also played in the DA's news conference today. Landry acknowledges officers tried to use tasers that night, but said the prongs probably hit Pellerin's satchel instead of his body. Landry said officers issued at least 39 verbal commands, 10 of them to drop the knife in which Pellerin never complied with. The DA says, quote, Trayford Pellerin could have dropped the knife and he would have lived in quote. K-9 officers on scene were not used because the district attorney says they're trained to attack moving targets. So even officers would have been at risk. Landry said Pellerin had methamphetamine, THC and nicotine in his bloodstream. He also said Pellerin was not shot in the leg because officers are trained to shoot in center mass. Only three officers fired and there were seven marked instances, the DA says, where police would have had reason to shoot Pellerin, but officers went, quote, above and beyond in this case, end quote. Landry added the officers responded to a dangerous situation and have been severely impacted by the event. These officers went above and beyond the requirements for use of deadly force in this case. They were very cognizant of civilians nearby Pellerin and did not want to harm any innocent bystanders. Officers utilized at least 39 total clearly heard verbal commands, including 13 to drop the knife, 17 to get on the ground, three, show me your hands, five, get out of the road, and one, do not go into the store. The DA also says he wants Lafayette to learn lessons from this incident about the damaging power of drug use, saying he feels the grand jury's decision is justified. In total disagreement with that statement, Trayford Pellerin's family. Three's on the street, Armand Boyd speaking with his mother and has more from the courthouse. Iman. District Attorney Don Landry says 27 reports as well as supplemental reports, including body cam footage and civilian video were surveyed for this particular case. But the mother says that she's just speechless that no indictment was made. I really don't know what to say. I'm speechless. During Tuesday's news conference, video from at least three police body cams were shown all leading up to the moment Pellerin was shot 11 times outside of the Circle K convenience store on the Evangeline Thruway. Trayford's mother says majority of that video was something she had never seen before, despite repeated requests. She says she was only allowed to see one video. The first one with the taser I did see where it didn't work. It was, it had a defect, but other than that, anything else I didn't see. Other surveillance video showed Pellerin in the Circle K store standing near the door for several minutes. Trayford's mother says her son was very familiar with that store. She says Trayford's sister worked there. She worked at that store. She yelled, Trinika Pellerin, Trinika. Was she at work that night? No, she wasn't. But he was familiar with yeah, the location. He would go and check on it. Pellerin family attorney Ron Haley says the fight isn't over. The journey is not over. Um, if you want to see change like I want to see change, uh, do not leave us. A lot of this they could have presented to me early on. I mean, they held it back for nine, you know, months, not knowing, you know, what actually went on. Shortly after the DA's press conference, Pellerin's mother thanked the community for the outpouring support that she received over the nine months. In Lafayette, Iman Boyd, KTC TV3. Now, as you saw in Iman's story, the Pellerin family and their attorney held their own news conference outside of the courthouse after the announcement of the grand jury's decision. Attorney Ron Haley says the fight is not over. Katie Easter shares his thoughts on what's next.
Ron Haley, Trayford Pellerin's family attorney, say they don't believe the district attorney's office conducted its own investigation into the shooting that killed Pellerin. Haley says the DA's office solely relied on the state police report. Bullet points are directly from the Louisiana State Police investigation, and you were literally reading line for line for line. That lets me know that no one from the outside was brought in to give any other opinion as to whether or not um, non-deadly force could have been used. Haley and family members say majority of the body cam footage shown during Tuesday's news conference was her first time seeing it. Haley says that video shows Trayford was in a constant state of retreat and was no threat. And she was like, look, I'm in danger. Let me get to home base. And that's where he was going. And he got killed going to what, what he, where he thought was a safe place. Haley says the fight will continue. He is asking the Department of Justice to look into civil rights violations. Again, I'm not just saying this independently of Trayford, right? Why am I asking this? Look around the state. I, I could run off 10 cases right now that we just have um, that have either been ruled or justified or not even taken to the grand jury. Those who continue to support the Peller and family say there are more issues. That the city of Lafayette has an issue that it needs to reckon with, with race. And what happened today and the words from the district attorney are a testimony to a system that is rotten and devalues black and brown bodies. That's right. Haley says that process to ask for a civil rights violation begins now. In Lafayette, Katie Sir KTC TV3. Now we want to take you through some of the events of that night based on the investigation by Louisiana State Police. Troopers were called in to investigate shortly after Pellerin was shot. Here's what they documented. They say just after 8, Lafayette Police responded to a call about a disturbance involving a person armed with a knife at a convenience store on the Evangeline Thruway. After police arrived, they say 31 year old Trayford Pellerin took off running and police began chasing him. They say they tried to use tasers, but he wouldn't stop. State police ruled the shooting justified and then turned over their findings to the 15th JDC. Pellerin's shooting death happened at a time of unrest throughout this country and then brought that attention here to Lafayette. The day after the shooting, a group of protesters shut down the Evangeline Thruway in both directions, demanding justice in the 31 year old's death. Later that same night at Moss and Pine Streets, demonstrators gathered near the police substation on Moss Street. After warnings were given, what's called flashbangs were deployed by police. The group dispersed shortly after. In the days to come, there were protests at Lafayette City Hall and the police department as well. Also, a national black paramilitary group with more than 400 armed demonstrators made their way to Lafayette for a peaceful protest as well, still demanding justice in Trayford's death. In September, the protests left Acadiana and made their way to the state capitol here in Louisiana. And there wasn't just a march there. The Pellerin family also filed a formal complaint with the state justice department to have the police officers names and body camera footage released. It's also important to note Trayford Pellerin's family filed a federal lawsuit in October. The suit is against LCG and Lafayette police. A hearing in that case is still pending. For the latest developments on this story and to check out all of our reports from today, go to KTC.com.